Here are 10 things that Filipino and Vietnamese people cannot live without. Yeah, we got to talk about it. Of course, joining us today is a very special comedian guest, Vic Tran. You're half Vietnamese and you're half Filipino. You're from H-Town. Let them know what it is. That's all there is. I'm a half Vietnamese, half Filipino comic <laughs> from H-Town. Yeah, and you were number one on Ronnie Cheng's up-and-coming Asian comedians to look out for. Oh, no, he texted me. He said, I'm off the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andrew, we got to get into this because we grew up in Kent, Washington. The primary Asians we grew up around were Filipino and Vietnamese. Yeah, and I think it all has only gotten even more Vietnamese and Filipino since we left. So... Uh uh, are we qualified to talk about it? <laughs> I yeah, feel like Vic, we got to ask feel, you because H-Town is also primarily Vietnamese and Filipino, right? Yeah, it's almost predominantly all Vietnamese Filipino. I didn't know any Chinese people until I moved to New York. We're the uh, first Chinese people you've actually you ever met. You guys are the only two Chinese people I know. And uh, yeah, and Jews. I didn't know any Jews until I moved to oh, New York. Oh, well, too. Vic, I know a whole Bel Air Ave that's going to be mad that you said that. But <laughs> 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 anyways, uh, yeah, let's get into the list. All right. This is, uh, we're going to start off with Filipinos. The number one thing that Filipinos, and by the way, this is in the Philippines, there may be some transfer over to the American side, though, is uh, chinelas, mm -hmm. flip-flops. Yeah, yeah, chinelas, yeah, can't live with them. Every Lola has them. They're throwing them at your head. Andrew, I remember that Chris the Cop, shout out to Chris the Cop, man, he used to have dunk contests with his uncles on a seven-foot hoop in their backyard, <laughs> and they were all wearing chinelas. Yeah, they I were mean, having dunk contests in the flip-flops. Yeah. Now, I, I think maybe in the Philippines, they're like competing in the Olympics with flip-flops, <laughs> but I think in America, yeah, it's dunk contests in the backyard and stuff like that. Um, Moving on to number two, Filipino sauces that are super unique, such as Ju Fran's banana ketchup. Banana ketchup, for sure. Yeah, I think that's distinctly Filipino. Do you think banana ketchup is, do you like it better or worse than regular ketchup, or do you like it's just different? Um, I, yeah, I, I was raised in Texas. I just like regular ketchup. <laughs> oh, my God, Vic, you are turning your back on yeah. the Filipino side. That's your uh, Houston side. What nah. do you think about Jollibee's, uh, the more ketchup, you know, Filipino spaghetti? I like it, by the way. I'm just saying, I'm just asking you. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Whoa. too poor, too big. Uh, I no, like that's it. sorry. That's Vic's Vietnamese side that said that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, moving on to rice. Um, obviously, Filipinos eat a lot of rice. A lot of Asians eat a lot of rice. However, Filipinos uniquely eat garlic rice. No other Asians have that. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I also maybe it helps them like maybe it helps them pick it up with their fingers. I don't know what the garlic is for. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though garlic is used as an adhesive, <laughs> yeah, adhesive. you know what's interesting? Yeah. It's good. About, Yo, Filipino rice is delicious. Um, you know what's interesting, Andrew? I heard that Filipinos do not cook garlic rice at home. It's more of a restaurant thing. Oh, it's a little bit like dim sum. You know how a lot of Cantonese people eat dim sum, but they would never make it at home. It's or like rarely. a specialty. Is that true? Like, I've never made garlic rice. Um, number four, uh, uh, we got lumpia. Yeah, love lumpia. I make it with my Lola all the time. But we make it like predominantly with pork. I know there's another one with like mainly veggies. Yeah, I, like I think there's like five things. or six or seven different types of lumpia you can get in the Philippines. Yeah, when yeah. you wrap it, Vic, do you leave it on the ends open so the ends can get crispy on the meat? Or is it like enclosed? I leave the ends open. Yeah, yeah, I leave the ends open, and you serve it with that sweet chili sauce. I would rate the sweet chili sauce over the banana ketchup. Andrew, is the lumpia the best egg roll-inspired dish? Because I apparently, and guys, and don't get mad at me, they were inspired by the egg rolls from Fujian like a couple yeah, of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, I, I would say maybe there's, like, a little bit of the taquito, like, like Spanish influence because the oh. ends are open. Because, oh, you know, Chinese yeah, egg rolls... Point. They're usually all enclosed. Are you taking the jazo or the chagio? I'm sorry, guys, for the pronunciation from the Vietnamese side, the double fried egg roll, or are you taking the lumpia? Lumpia all day. Like, none of my black friends come over and ask for Vietnamese egg rolls. They're asking for lumpia. <laughs> I think a lot more Western appeal, to be honest. Yeah, I do yeah, agree yeah. with you. Um, moving on to number five, the Philippine mangoes. Mm. Um, Andrew, remember growing up, the bag that just says Philippine mangoes on it, and it's like super sugary, but those are the best ones. Yeah, I don't know if there's like ever a dried fruit bag that just says like, Vietnam or Viet <laughs> Vietnam. Oh, the jackfruit <laughs> chips, the Vietnamese jackfruit chips they got. Oh those. yeah, but nothing yeah. would say just Chinese. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think delicious, about the Philippine delicious. mangoes? What insight can you offer us, H Town Filipino Viet Rep? Oh, I know Filipinos. They love their mangoes. My Lola used to cut them in half and make the flour. You know, you guys do that. Oh, when you cut the yeah. cubes and flip it inside out. If your oh, grandma yeah. didn't do that, they didn't love you. Mm, you got to get the point. traction pattern. Mm -hmm. Moving on to number six, Filipinos in the Philippines love the karaoke machine. Some yeah. people are saying specifically Magic Mike. Obviously, you could go with higher-end versions as well. What's yeah. your memories with karaoke? 
I mean, I definitely got my singing voice from the Vietnamese side. I'm not much of a singer. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about karaoke, but apparently it turns you into a fantastic nurse. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying instead of, like, America's Got Talent, like, uh, Sharice, you ended up more like Paris by Night? Or not even uh, Paris? Paris by Night, yeah, for sure, yeah. Uh, uh, Andrew, some great American uh, Filipino singers. The first Asian artist to break America was Sharice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she had the song with Ayaz, Pyramids. Uh, moving on to number seven, the Wallace Tambo. It is a broom made of palm leaves. Oh, yeah. We have that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I like those because when you get hit by them, it doesn't really hurt. Mm. Okay, doesn't I like it. Hurt. You can buy this in Queens at, uh, at one of those Filipino markets over in uh, Woodside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, does it sweep well? No, 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 no. There's... there's... <laughs> They're outdated, but, you know, they look... I don't, I don't have it for identity reasons. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah, if it yeah. touches, like, the ground hard enough. You know, it doesn't have enough, like, yeah. surface tension you to, like, got, push no, the you dust. Got nothing. Hey, hey, I got something that is going to uh, jeopardize my Chinese car, too, Andrew. I prefer Biotherm over Tiger Balm. <laughs> oh, Biofreeze? The, 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 yeah. bio yeah. bio the, the Biofreeze is more modern. I don't know, guys. You know, there's still... Tiger Balm. Tiger Bob, David. Tiger Bob. Um, no, those brooms are dirtier than the floor most times. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to number eight, we've got Filipino honorifics bowing and touching the head of the hand, uh, the touching the forehead to the top of the hand of an elder. Yeah, yeah, I would, I, I would do did you, that. Did you used to do this, Vic? Yeah, whenever my Theo would walk in, they're like, bless, bless, and you put your, you know, you put your forehead to the back of their That's a pretty hand. cool ritual, honestly. I, I think like it's pretty one. cool. It's very, like, it's very, like, mob, like, would you very ever, mafia-like. <laughs> Yo, that's pretty funny. It is, it is. <laughs> um, somebody said, number nine, Filipino family. All Asians are generally very close to their families, but Filipinos actually love their families in a, con- <laughs> in a conventional hug and kiss more effusive way. Yo, Vic, yeah. how did you uh, move to New York away from your family? Like, if uh, both your Viet and Filipino side must have been heartbroken by this. Uh, no, yeah, that was very tough. That was very tough. But now I don't even think of them. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think? Like, obviously, you've observed other Asians through movies like Shang-Chi and all these, like, Farewell, where it seems so cold. You know, like the way the Chinese parents and the Chinese kids are. Uh, and then you're from two cultures, but maybe, I'd say probably more this Filipino side than the Viet side, mm-hmm. more effusive and a more Disney style of love. Like, oh, come over here. Yeah, it, it definitely felt more warm on my mom's side, the Filipino side. But my dad's side is also very fun. Like, my cousins were all, like, very fun. We're close. And speaking of coming to New York, the last thing I did with my dad before we went to New York, or before I moved to New York, is we all went to a strip club together in Houston. Oh. That's the last thing we did. <laughs> so, yeah, there's literally no boundaries. <laughs> right. Um, uh, somebody said, number 10, the tabo, the handheld bidet. What is, what is the handheld bidet? Oh, well, the way that I've always seen it, it's like a little bucket, and after you, you you know, take a number two, you fill it up, and then you crouch over the, the toilet, and you just pour it over your hole. Right, to make it extra clean and fresh. and, and just It, it works better than toilet paper, honestly. Right. Yeah, I mean, still wipe, but it works. It's extra, it's extra clean. Uh, number 11, Filipino channels like TFC. Obviously, uh, in the Philippines, all the channels are Filipino, but in America, yeah. there's more like uh, SBC or, or TFC. Or, yeah. Is SBN, your mom watching SBN. TFC or anybody uh, back in Houston? Um, my mom didn't, she, uh, but my grandma, that was like, uh, that was a necessity for her to stay at our, uh, at our house. We had the Filipino channel. She would watch, watch Wawa Wee every day. Oh, I think. Wow, wow, we. <laughs> Y'all remember that? I don't yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, a talent it. show. It was a talent yeah, show, right? Yeah, 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 like yeah. America's Got Talent type thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Wow Wow Wee. Moving on to the Viet side, guys. Number one. Wait, v- so this is 10 things that Viet's can't live without. Yeah, the Viet's in Vietnam cannot All live right, without. All right, so we're switching, Vic. You got to speak on your Viet side now. Switch brains. All right, number one, <laughs> eat outside on the sidewalk. Oh, uh, yeah, my parents, they make me eat outside. That's Andrew, nice. there's this place called Mom in the LES with the really small, short plastic stools. Moving on to number two, riding a moped with tons of things on it. Yeah, well, I feel like that's just an Asian thing because Indians do that too, right? Yeah. I think in Vietnam, they're famous for their moped culture. Andrew, I would say- I think that's just a not rich thing to do. (laughs) Do you think it contributes to Viet's love of vehicles, Andrew? Because our Viet friends be loving whips. They love cars. Oh, no. I think they love cars. I think they- Well, I I also think this is another thing that probably should be on the list of like luxury items, luxury brands. Um, Moving on to number three, going to the markets every day for a fresh meal or ingredients and just like repeating it the next day. Yeah, my dad would do that. We used to work together, and every day on the way home, we would stop by in Houston. It's called Hong Kong Market. And then, um, yeah, get ingredients just for that night. 
cook that night and then do it all over again the next day. No, yeah. I will say this. Viet's and Chinese, they have huge markets. I th- and then now Koreans kind of have theirs like H-marts. But like I would say traditionally the bigger markets were like Viet and You're Chinese. You're talking about the outside markets too, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. They don't and, believe uh, in uh, Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, to be honest, I think it, it matters. Like hotter climates have more outside markets. In colder climates, they're more, uh, mo- I guess, moving towards that supermarket style, obviously, in 2023. Huh. Moving to number four, using chopsticks for anything noodles or rice related, but also using their hands with anything lettuce related are is it true that viets are really good at wrapping things in leaves and various things they love wrapping that they wrap their egg rolls in leaves it's like it's already wrapped <laughs> <laughs> yo that's actually pretty funny i didn't think about that actually, the the, jazzo, right yeah the the vietnamese egg roll wrapped in the lettuce I, I love that that's like one of my favorite things but i think it's funny that uh viets are one of the only asians that use chopsticks and also their hands a lot because uh, other people like Thai people or Indonesian people uh, using chopsticks, unless you're eating the noodle dishes, which are a little bit more of like the, from the Chinese influence, yeah. you're not really using chopsticks as much as using spoons and, yeah, and I've hands. I've heard that. Yeah. I yeah. think it really speaks to Vietnam's unique position being part East Asian and part Southeast Asian, having like a lot of uh, mixed culture. Um, number five, Viet's are not afraid to ask you personal questions. Yeah, this goes, one's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Who said? Where'd you get this from, David? Did someone Yo, leave a, a comment? This is a pretty accurate list, to, to be honest, based off my experience. What, what's going on with that? Because uh, if man. he will ask you, "Hey, man, how much money do you make? Hey, how did you? How did that date go with that girl, man? Yeah, did you have yeah, sex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much. They'll ask you, "Did you have sex? How you had it? You know, did <laughs> did you?" <laughs> I mean, it goes, it goes back to the thing about not having boundaries. It goes back to me and my dad at the strip club together. <laughs> right, right, Why, right. How come there's no boundaries? Is it because they, because there's no boundary between North and South Vietnam right now? Just <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought that was, I thought that was just an Asian thing, but I guess it's a Vietnamese thing. No, there's a lot of boundaries if you're more. <laughs> in the East oh, no, yeah, China, yeah. oh, Chinese love the boundaries. Uh, <laughs> point number six, Viet's have a great sense of humor about everything in Vietnam except the war. You can make fun of how fat somebody is, how ugly somebody is, but you cannot talk about the war. Yeah, that is really funny. My dad does have like a brutal sense of humor and his, all of his siblings do too. Maybe that's where I got it from. But um, yeah, I guess, I guess we don't sit around and joke about the war a lot. Right. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I, I would say there's probably not a lot to joke about. I mean, especially for people who went through it, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's me tough. and my cousins make fun of it a lot. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the, we weren't anywhere you around have, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Uh, number seven, Andrew, Viet's love believing in ghosts. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, I'm like, what? Uh, Yo, they're super superstitious, man. Like, you can make, you can't make fun of the war. But you super can't make fun of the ghosts from the war. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, growing up in camp, man, I'll tell you this. I, I don't want to say anything, but I heard a lot of ghost stories, man, where people yeah. camping see ghosts yeah. at home. They see yeah, ghosts. Yeah, I definitely yeah. heard a lot of ghost stories from my Filipinos friends. are afraid of ghosts, too. Oh, yeah, okay. they're very afraid of ghosts. Uh, point number eight, being relentlessly optimistic. I have to agree with this myself. I'm, I'm not saying, Vic, you got an interesting point about this. Andrew, our Vietnamese friends are very optimistic. Yeah, so this is what I noticed is like a lot of... Viet people, like, the, when they're entering situations or, like, maybe going to a party or you're going on a trip, they're just like, yeah, man, I think it might be fun. Like, why not? And then I'm just going to try this thing. Like, I'll just do it. Or, like, approaching Go women. Go get them attitude yeah. when it comes to fun things. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it does lend it themselves to be very adventurous when they're just like, yo, I'm going to go talk to that girl. And Viet's then you're like, adventurous, man. And then you're like, yo, yo, I don't know if she's, you, you think she's going to like, I don't know. I just, I'm, hey, I'm going. Man, I don't know if she's going to respond the way I want. But I'm not afraid, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah not afraid. I, I don't know if they're optimistic or if they just love to gamble. I think they just love a good gamble. <laughs> <laughs> you mean in their brains they're actually more like, yeah, man, you know, I just did the math, though. I got a 50-50 chance of her. Like, so I'll take the probability. 50-50. And compare that to blackjack, probability is still pretty good. <laughs> Number nine, Vietnamese love having a Buddhist shrine in the house even if their family has converted to Christianity or Catholicism. That's super true. Yeah, when we walk into our house, we have this big Buddha figure on the right side, and then he's literally staring down a portrait of Jesus. Like, they're having, like, a face-off. <laughs> uh, who who usually... <laughs> so, <laughs> what if it's like, man, one is for salvation, but the other side, that's just to get money, man. <laughs> um, I think it's really interesting. Uh, Chinese and Vietnamese, they believe in the same uh, type of Buddhism. It's called Mahayana. It's particularly prosperity and fortune-centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus uh, Tibetan, Shinto, uh, there's an Indian style of Buddhism, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving on to number 10, 24 gold carat chains, 24 carat gold chains, and jade Buddha necklaces. 
Uh, and, yeah, the chain. I got my dad's chain on right now. So and, and <laughs> a waiting day, and we do have to note that twenty four carats it is shinier and brighter than like fourteen carat, which is what a lot of people are getting nowadays. But I feel like mm. traditionally. You know, but the you gotta old take school. care of it. It's very soft. Right, twenty four karat gold is very soft. When the old yeah. school, they want the gold chain. They want it shining. Oh yeah, yeah. We got a we got a whole collection of like gold chains at my dad's house, and I I wear this when I lie to girls on dates. I tell them that uh, when my parents fled the war, they had to melt all of their gold and reassemble it into jewelry. That's like my story. <laughs> Well, that's not true. My hey, dad just hey, bought this. Uh, real a quick, H Town. Do you want to shout out to uh, Jimmy Boy, Johnny Dang, everybody? <laughs> oh yeah, Johnny Dang. You made my friend Zah hit a grill. I would love a grill. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get into the Filipino Americans and Viet Americans list real quick. I mean, because obviously some of those had transfer over, but they were more for the older generation, more of the people from Asia. Right. Um, what about Filipino Americans themselves, man? I would say this. One thing that's unique about Filipino Americans, Andrew, is they always have a celebrity archetype. Because I remember up north where it was like richer, Andrew. The Filipinos act, growing up acted like Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy. And down south, we definitely was more, uh, the Filipinos were more street with it. Oh, more, yeah. More I, like I a, would a say Jordan Clarkson type thing. Filipinos Chinese. definitely got the range of personalities and the subcultures they're into from emo to like more gangster to Hooper to kind of like lover boy Chris Brown to like everything in between, even white boy, you yeah. know, like the whitewashed Filipino guys. Like, they kind of got everything. But I'm saying that they uh, they shoot extreme in all directions, right? Oh, man. Yeah, I guess so. I guess they got representation in, like, every corner of, like, pop culture, which is cool. But they love they love to make a celebrity Filipino. Like, right. I don't know if Bruno Mars is Filipino, but if you ask one of my aunts, that guy's full Filipino. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's actually half, but to be honest, Bruno Mars, he doesn't talk about it often. I think he more claims Hawaii. Wow. Um, Filipinos love R&B, turntablism, 90s hip-hop, the Jabberwockies world. These yeah. are all separate sects of the umbrella of hip-hop or urban culture. Yeah, I also think it's why uh, there's a lot of Filipino DJs, you know, especially like wedding DJs and just DJs in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've been at Scribble Jam. Um, they love acapella singing. If you see an Asian-looking guy in a barbershop <laughs> quartet, it's a Filipino. Yeah, they love to sing. It goes back to the karaoke. They love Glee, Disney, and also, you said, the emotion of Glee. <laughs> Just the happy people. <laughs> um, empanadas and menudo. Yeah, very Latin-based foods. Um, I, I've actually never had Filipino menudo, or I think I had a. What once. do you think of the raisins in the Filipino empanadas? Because I noticed that Filipino empanadas from uh, Red Ribbon have raisins in it. Yeah, I'm just not a big raisin guy. Um, and then last but not least, Andrew, under Filipino Americans, we have passing as other races. Mm. Oh, man. This, they, Filipinos obviously can look like everybody. So they're very, like, racially ambiguous. What is the most common race that Filipinos get mistaken for? Uh, being full Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> Filipinos love to be a quarter Filipino. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, but I guess what? Do they also get uh, mistaken for Latin? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. That would be the closest one. They get mistaken for being What Latino. percentage of Filipinos could pass in a pinch as Mexican or Latin or some type of... I, I think I think maybe like 40 to 60% could pass. Right. Like even you have passed before, possibly, From right? like an angle, you know, from far away, you know. Somebody say, que hondo, güey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, I think Andrew, 10% might be able to pass as white or black, too. Yeah, as part white and part black. Yeah, we have yeah. a friend, and I'm not gonna say his name. He has lived his whole life in Seattle being half black and half Samoan, and he's full Filipino. Are you talking about Black Kenneth? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it made him a lot cooler, though, too. Uh, but moving on to Viet Americans. We got a, a, a list of funny things, guys. Oof. By the way, this is all jokes. Do not be offended. Um, you had, Vic, the number one thing you wrote that is unique to Viet Americans is loving Trump. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Vietnamese people love Trump. Right, you know? statistically, this is yeah. true. But not, not, it's in the same way that, like, Cubans love Trump, you know, because it's right. like, it, it's anti-socialism. It comes from their PTSD. Okay, yeah, you I know. love Trump. We love Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Rose used to say it's, that. I'm not going to lie. All yes. right, moving on to number two. We got ratchet versions of wholesome Asian venues, such as throwing down fights at the boba shop. Andrew, what, what, what yeah, are so I think Viet, I think Viet's are actually into a lot of like, kind of like Chinese food or like maybe like boba shop culture, but they kind of have their own version and oh. their own versions, or at least like, at the boba shops in the Viet areas, they they can get you know more. Are rowdy. you talking about sip cha to o, uh, maybe seven leaves? Listen, I'm just saying the <laughs> OC got, boba shops, you know, they're a little bit more active, I think, than the six two six ones. Yeah, yeah, I think they go to those shops just to fight. 
I don't think they want boba <laughs> at all. <laughs> hey, man, I like the honeydew taro, but, man, it just needs a little bit more fun injected into it. Um, <laughs> moving on, uh, Heineken, Hennessy, Remy, a lot of French liquors, and obviously Heineken is just the green bottle beer. Yeah, I know I know for sure Hennessy and Cognac, you know, they're going to be big in Vietnam. Is that from the French influence? Because those are French. I think for sure, yeah, 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 because they talked about it in The Sympathizer. But, like, uh, Heineken, Vietnamese people love Heineken. Yeah, that's more. That is a a, a street drink of choice of all Asians. Yeah. Um, dragon tats. <laughs> My dad is fifty six. I think that he's still thinking about getting a dragon tattoo. Oh, he doesn't have one yet. He doesn't want not yet, but he might get one. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he's still out in the field. Yeah. Um, tennis, Vic, you got to explain this one. Yeah, I don't know. Growing up in uh, in Houston, there were a ton of Vietnamese people playing tennis, and I was one of them. But like, uh, yeah, Dobie High School. Like the Vietnamese school, like uh, close to where I went to high school, the whole the oh, whole tennis. the whole team was like just Vietnamese people. And uh, last but not least, Andrew, I know you're gonna like this one: running small businesses. Yo, man, Viet's are so <laughs> entrepreneurial, bro. Like, yeah. I feel like as many small businesses as like Chinese people run and Koreans run. Now, Viet's are like, yo, man, I'm I'm about to do my own thing. Like, that's yeah. what they they're like entrepreneurs to the to the max. Yeah, I to a, almost to a ten out of ten level. My family owns a small boutique hair salon, and in that hair salon is a massage station, a uh, pedicure station, and also an eyeglass repair station. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. No, and, and is there a... <laughs> they're like a bun me shop in the back. Yeah, a, <laughs> yeah, you can yeah, get yeah. a cafe suda mm -hmm. and buy some numbers. I'm Yo, yeah. I, that's what I like. I, I mean, I think that that's... They're just... They're just packing all the businesses in there that they know that people need. So they're just like, oh, you just go from here to here to here to here. And then your whole day is done. Yeah. I mean, awesome. at the end of the day, guys, these are all just jokes. Uh, there obviously is some truth behind these jokes. They're really funny. I'll say this. I'm going to Vegas with my Viet and Filipino friends all day <laughs> over Chinese people. If you 100%. It's going to be a better trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as it's not a business trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Check out Vic Trans Comedy down below. Guys, let us know in the comments down below what you think about this list. Which of these applied? What are some things that we left off? Which apply more to Vietnamese and Filipinos from the motherland? And then which apply specifically to Vietnamese and Filipino Americans? Anyway, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pop Boys. Check out Vic Tram. We out. Peace. Peace.